I finally looked into it a little bit. Another aspect of OJ's trial that people have mentioned, but I've just never, never explained the common sense uh, question that people would have about Mark Furman's pleading the fifth. Um, he was asked a couple of questions and conferred with his attorney and invoked his Fifth Amendment privilege, which Fifth Amendment is, of course, the right not to uh, incriminate yourself. Um, and usually we see that happen without someone actually uh, pleading the Fifth or invoking their Fifth Amendment privilege. We see someone simply not testify at trial in the same manner that O.J. chose not to testify on his own behalf at trial. And once or twice when Furman was interviewed or I believe in the O.J. Made in America series, uh, one little segment that he said it, and it's all I've ever really heard him say on it, was that, um, well, I, I, I can't answer that. If I answer one question, that then, uh, then, then the, well, usually the prosecution, in this case, the defense, the attorney can just run with me, as if if he answered one question, he would have to answer all the questions. And I recall he, he did answer a question, a couple questions by invoking his Fifth Amendment privilege and, and then the attorney asked him he said do you intend to invoke your Fifth Amendment privilege to any and all questions I might ask you today and, and the answer was yes um, so then the uh, defense attorneys wanted to ask one more question the prosecution resisted that uh, the judge says just says okay what's what's your question uh, so this is when they said uh, did you plant evidence or falsify any evidence or aspects in in this case um, and he again invoked the Fifth Amendment privilege um, and you know I understand what he's saying um, about uh, the attorney being able to just run with you, but it just does not apply in any way. And he knows this, you know, it's just a little misdirection and no one's ever talked the common sense of it. Just like uh, how OJ just, it's just impossible that he fought with Ron Goldman, but um, that's on another video, but um, um The, the attorney asked him um, if he had planted or falsified any evidence. Um, and, and so that's his explanation for, for, you know, when you plead the fifth, people assume guilt, you know. And because there has to be a good reason that you do that, that you feel the answer would incriminate you. So... Um, what we usually see is people just simply not testify on their own behalf um, because if they do take the stand, then their attorney will question them all nicey-nice and portray them in the best light possible. But if they do choose to do that, then they open themselves up also to cross-examination by the prosecution. So in that light, that then I, you know, Furman is expressing that reality, I guess, uh, of the Fifth Amendment, that, that if someone that is on trial and is charged with a crime chooses to testify and to answer any questions or make any statements, then in that way the prosecution can then run with them, like he says, and they have to answer the questions um, that are put to them. Um, they can't just go up there and make nice with their attorney and then refuse to let the prosecution cross-examine them. But it's a totally different uh, situation, and he knows that, like I said, it's just a little misdirection and whatnot that no one has ever pointed out, and it's hard to believe, but they haven't. You know, um, a witness in a trial that is not charged with anything might also find themselves like he did in a situation where they might not want to answer a question. 
and it's not that they could be incriminated in that particular case, uh, the crime that brought that particular case about, uh, but they could be incriminated in some other crime, like in Furman's case, um, perjury or um, committing a crime, uh, planning evidence or falsifying evidence in that case, or even falsifying evidence in uh, past cases in his career, which maybe not charges right away, but could at least open him up to an internal investigation, you know, and he wouldn't want any of that. That could cost him his job, his pension, you know, even if he was never charged with a crime, which he very well could be. And he obviously would not want to open that can of worms, you know, um, but it's just another very simple common sense thing that no one has ever uh, explained. They've let Furman just once or twice say, well, I couldn't just let the defense attorney run with me and nothing else was said and, and left the impression that if he answered anything, then um, he would have to answer everything, you know. So there's obvious, obviously some things he didn't want to answer, which, you know, he didn't want to have a perjury charge He because he, he had said to F. Lee Bailey, of course, about never using the N-word and saying the things that, Obviously, he said, um, because, um, you know, the uh, screenwriter gal had the recordings. There was no way around it. So he chose not to incriminate himself, and that's his right. I would have done the same thing, you know. But um, Tom Lang, you know, I don't care for him entirely, you know, but I kind of enjoy the way that he speaks and asserts himself and, and the way he gestures. And he says, you know, why would you do that? Why would you, you know, if it was me, I would say the LAPD does not, he's always making this gesture and pointing and, you know, the LAPD does not plant evidence. The LAPD does, you know, and, and, um, you know, but, but he didn't do that. And why would you not do that? And, you know, Furman could have done that, or at the very least, he could just simply just answer the question and say no, because you can answer a, a question selectively as a witness. You can plead the fifth to a question, and then you can answer another, and then you can plead the fifth again after that to another question. You know, the misdirection he's trying to use, just it just simply doesn't apply.